from the historic Polonia District in Buffalo. The Dingus Day capital of the world. It's Dingus Day Diary, a celebration of Polonia's past, present, and future. Now, here are your hosts, Eddie Dobosevitz and Katie Morris. Wow, Katie, is it, have you ever seen anything <laughs> like this? Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for Dingus Day 2019. Dingus Day Diary, another edition. We are uh, uh, celebrating Dingus Day. For those of you who do not know what Dingus Day is, Dingus Day is really an ancient Polish custom that celebrates the end of Lent and the beginning of spring. And it's so in Buffalo, it's celebrated like nowhere else in the world. Not even in Poland do they celebrate Dingus Day like this. And we really talk about the history, the culture, when we're talking about Dingus Day. And we're so excited to be here with everyone and just a few thousand of our closest friends. Yeah, yeah, a, a, a few, of about tens of thousands. We're, uh, we're located right here in the historic Polonia district around the Broadway Fillmore area, around the Broadway market. This, Katie, did you know, was at one point the second largest Polish colony in the world wow. outside of war. Wow, that's yeah. unbelievable. Amazing, and, and it's, it's, it's great to be here. You know, the, the, there's there's so much to the tradition here. This is such an authentic experience, and part of that authenticity is the uh, uh, combination of religion uh, being involved in this whole thing. That's for sure, and we're seeing the party, obviously, starting and continuing today, but it actually really began yesterday. Yes, it did, and we kicked it off at the Leonard Post yesterday, and because there are so many polka bands that have gathered in Buffalo for this event, we thought we should probably bless all the instruments, really bless the musicians, because the musicians, <laughs> they could use some blessings. So. And they're going to have a lot of work today. They're going to be playing all day long. Yeah, it was a tradition that we started a number of years ago, right at the very beginning of when we took Dinka State to this level. And it continues on. It's a great family-friendly kind of an event. We and, you know, it. the music such a big part of this celebration, but another huge part of it that so many people come down here for, Eddie, is that parade that we've got to talk about. The biggest. This parade is amazing. It's such a grassroots kind of a thing. It goes through the streets of Old Polonia, and it's it's just it's a it's a real another family tradition. It's turned into families gather together, celebrate Easter, and then they come in from uh, other places. You know, people that have moved away, and they spend that extra day here. They build floats. They yeah. march in the parade as a family unit. It's just, it's really spectacular. There's squirt guns, there's pussy willows. It's a great time for everybody. It there. really is, it really is. And it's, it's just great to be here with you. I, you know, listen, I gotta tell you, Katie, yeah. I love you like like family, uh -huh. honest to God. <laughs> but I really miss Autumn. Autumn has been here every year with us and she's not here. There's not much I can argue with that. I miss Autumn Lewandowski too, because she is such a wonderful person. But you know what, there actually is a really special reason that Autumn's not here with us today. One. Hey everyone, happy Dinkus Day. We would like to introduce you to our little Polish princess, Natalia Rain. We're learning to polka. And you know what? I think she wanted to arrive early so she could enjoy Dinkus Day as well. And obviously that's the reason I am not there celebrating with you this year. But I can't wait to get back at it. And by next year, she'll have her little Polish shoes on and celebrating with everybody as well. So until then, grab your pussy willows, your squirt guns, have a great, great time and enjoy Dinkus Day. Okay, I guess that's a, good, a valid reason. We'll now, give her that one. <laughs> li listen, Autumn, I, I wanted to give you this on Dingus Day because you promised that you would have the baby on Dingus Day, but I guess the baby had different plans. But anyway, we, we have this for little Natalia, and we can't wait to see her in it, and we wish you all the best. We love you, and we miss you, so hurry you back. Know, Autumn couldn't be here, but she definitely sent us some beautiful weather. Well, I'll tell you, day. Autumn, you're awesome, honey. It's, this is the most spectacular weather we've ever had. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, Eddie, we talk about Dingus Day. There's so many things that are a part of it, but one thing that's a huge part of Polish culture, the food. The food, there's there's no Polish celebration without food, and we wanted to find out what makes good pidogi, so we went to St. Stan's to find out. Oh, I'm not going to give away all our secrets. No, no, no. Here at St. Stan's, we've been making pidagi for a long time. Our pidagi journey began 10 years ago. We usually have about 25 to 30 people coming in to help. I can get me ready to make dough. 
for our pierogi, blending all the ingredients together in the blender. Then we pass it on to our kneader that kneads the dough that goes onto the rolling machine. Our first attempt, we made about 200 dozen. This spring order, we have over 1,050 dozen. That's about 12,600 pierogi. If we had more time, we would do more at Christmas time because people like them for Vigilia. Easter is big, of course, too. We start with the fillings the two days before, and then we have a actual roller that belonged to a lady that used to make the pierogi. After the rolling machine, it goes to get cut into circles. Then it gets passed on to our fillers that fill the round dough with either kraut, cheese, or potatoes. From there, it goes on into the kitchen to our boiling system. Gets boiled till they're done and floating to the top. And then they are turned over to get into ice water. From there, it goes on to our drying table where they get to dry a little bit and then we package them ready for sale. I think the love that's put into the, the making of the filling and the dough and the fun that we have in making them, really. I mean, everybody gets along. We all gossip and talk and just have a good time doing them. And that's what makes a good pierogi. It's a big operation. It takes a long time, a lot of steps are involved. But we as a family here at St. Sands, we all get together and we love doing it. It's the Mother Church of Polonia. It was the first church here. A lot of people have moved away, but a lot of people come back and we appreciate them all. We've been around here for 145 years and hopefully will last another 145 years. You know what I love about that story? How she says it's not just about making the food, it's about the chat that you get to do. I, I, while you're oh, making I, I, the food. Teresa is wonderful. All those people at St. Stan's, they're just so wonderful. St. Stan's, of course, is the mother church of Polonia. That church and the parish really started this whole Polish colony, so that's where it all began. Well, I am impressed. Those are picture perfect. Okay. Yeah, now I just, uh, you've been promising to make pierogi for me for about five years. Have I would I? love to have some. Uh oh. All right. All right. I'll see what I can do. Make I think I happen. can make that happen. All right. Hey, we've got much more coming up so make sure you stay with us don't move folks there's plenty of dingus day diary coming up we're just getting started put on your polka dancing shoes dingus day diary will return with more toe tapping fun when we continue happy dingus day everybody coming up we'll meet the future of polka music and maybe even learn a few polish words we're just getting started dingus day diary will be right back Happy Dingus Day, Buffalo. Happy Dingus Day, Buffalo, New York. Don't know her luck from right. She shows everyone in What a party, huh? <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Boy, we're having a great time here at Dingus Day I'll say, the, the, the crowds in the streets are, it's, it's amazing to look out here. There are tens of thousands of people clad in red and white. It's like a sea of red and white. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Everybody's waving, smiling, having a great time and out it's, here, it's So sure. much love in the air. People are hugging and kissing. It's, it's, it, it is a great vibe, folks. I'm not kidding. You know, Eddie, when we talk about this historic area of Buffalo, this Polish, historically Polish area, we've talked about how it started to center around the church when it first began. Yeah, it, and it started to center around the church and it started to center around this church in, 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 uh, in the historic colonial district at St. Stan's. But there are other areas of, of Western New York that are predominantly Polish. And one of them was out in Elma, New York, back uh, almost not quite a hundred years ago, a little farming community that was Elma around there, around the uh, Ebenezer, Elma, started a little church because the farmers and sawmills there uh, needed uh, some place to pray. So this is a story of a little country church that has turned into a powerful prayer force. There was farmland, and still we have many farms around here. While Buffalo's Polonia was booming early in the last century, six miles east of the city line, a small group of farmers and lumberjacks had a different experience. They didn't mind living off the land, but they wanted a connection to heaven. 
a church would be a good first step. First Mass was here on May 1st, 1925. There were 35 or so uh, family members, around 100 people, in the hook leather here. And that's how it started. People start collecting money and uh, made petition to the bishop to establish the church. But families grow, and eventually that little church just needed more room. Well, there were so many people, so they extended the church, they rebuilt the church. We can now sit uh, 1,000 people here in the church. What was once a tiny little church has grown to be one of the largest in the region. When I first came out here, I was um, 496 um, parishioner in the parish, uh, family-wise, um, and now we've been up as high as 5,000. It's very busy. We have six Masses on the weekend, two on the Saturday and four on Sunday. We've been coming to Gabriel's for at least 15, 20 years. It's a great family atmosphere for people. They're very nice and uh, you always get good meetings from the, uh, the liturgies every, every week. But don't let the numbers fool you because they can be deceiving. We are full here because we have 16,000 people. If only 25% comes, we have 4,000 people for a weekend. It seems, oh, this is great, but where are the other 12,000? You have to ask yourself, though, with all the upheaval in the church and chaos in the world today, has religion become obsolete? It is a very sad moment in the history of our church, but we know that God is in charge. God is in charge of everything, and we'll go through this period of cleansing, and our faith hopefully will rebound, and you know, when there will be need for God, for God and need for Christ, when some, God forbid, tragedy strikes, people will come back to the church. I witnessed that when it was 9-11, when it was in Eden. In I had noon mass, the church was filled up, Catholics and non-Catholics. But we don't want any tragedy. We want people to come to the church because they love God, because they are loved by God, because Jesus loves us. This is our faith. Okay, so the role of religion may have changed in people's lives, but they still have to eat, right? And feeding the body might just be the gateway to nourishing your soul. And these guys should know they have the biggest fish fry in Western New York. We started at 200 and now we're up to basically 1,200 we average a week for the six weeks during Lent. More than just a place to pray, for many, St. Gabe's is also a place to play. Well, it's a kind of a family affair. I love seeing my parents and all my brothers and sisters come along. So it's a, definitely a family fun outing every Saturday. What's the future of St. Gabriel's? I think this parish has a great future, considering we have so many young families, young children, many organizations. And what about Dingus Day? Oh, Dingus Day is such a joyful celebration of Easter Monday, and I enjoy the Polish food and Polish traditions, and keep up the Polish tradition. Did you observe Dingus Day when you were growing up in Poland? It was a little bit different, not like here. We didn't have like a dances or things like that. We just have the bucket of the water running after girls or boys and pouring the water you know, on each other and having fun. They say on the St. Patrick's Day, everybody Irish. On the Dingus Day, everybody Polish. <laughs> Polonia have to be strong, not only for Dingus Day, but we have such a beautiful churches. You know, St. Stan's, Corpus Christi, St. John Cantus, St. John Gualbert, St. Casimir. Those are beautiful churches. Let's fill them up. Let's keep our faith strong. With God's help, we'll overcome everything. And we still will be strong and faithful to God and faithful to the church. So Elma is definitely a Polish community, but there are others. Black Rock is another neighborhood here in Buffalo, predominantly Polish. They take their Polishness very serious over there. In fact, some people are learning the Polish language at a club that started in 1899. Because, you know, when you want to learn Polish, there is no school like old school. Nowy means new, duży means Big. Okay. Over at the Polish cadets in Buffalo's Black Rock neighborhood, people have started to reclaim the language of their ancestors. I've been coming to Polish cadets for, for a few years now, just for, you know, regular Friday night. Uh, I've met Wendy, who runs the club, along with her husband. And since she knew I speak Polish, I'm from Poland, I teach children, she thought it could be a good idea to open a Polish class. 
I used to teach also German and English back in back in Poland. We are learning conversational, which is great to learn how to say, you know, please, thank you, where is this, where is that, can I please have, which is perfect for traveling to Poland and being on vacation there. Seriously, if babies in Poland can learn how to speak it, how hard can it be? It's very difficult. Is it impossible? It's possible, it's just complicated. It right. takes time and practice. But kids think differently than adults, right? <laughs> it's a smaller class and Eliza is gearing it towards the adult learner, which is speaking, writing, and in reading. So those three together are helping the adult mind figure out how to put it all together, and that's very helpful. As interesting as it may be, learning another tongue can come in handy, especially if you plan to travel. Many students actually are traveling to Poland this year or next year, so they're hoping to learn some so they can communicate when they travel. My sister and I are traveling to Poland in July. Since we're members of Polish cadets, we thought we would join this class. How long do you think it takes somebody to learn the basics? Uh, the really basics, a um, couple of good months at least, but these are just really basic, you know, communication skills, I would say. It's in the evening, so it suits, you know, most of the people after work. It starts at 6.30, and we spend here at least two hours. We have a break, so we can chat as well. We can have a beer. So what are the most important words to learn in Polish? I guess it depends who you ask. Maybe kocham cię or lubię cię. You know, it breaks the ice. <laughs> means I love you, I like you. Jeden piwa, Prussia. One beer, please. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Happy Dickens Day, Buffalo. Well, happy Dinkus Day to them as well. What a special thing to be learning another language. Now, Eddie, I'm watching this video, and I thought, not all of that was shot in Blackrock. No, you're absolutely right. I shot some of that video myself last time I was in Rzeszow, Poland, and uh, it, it, yeah, we needed some authenticity, so we thought we'd have the Regina Dance Group come here. The Regina Dance Group is the resident dance group from Polish cadets, and it, it, they... I'm telling you folks, if you've never been to Polish Cadets, do yourself a favor, go there, even if it's just for a fish fry, but if you want to learn Polish language classes, they have them on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and the Regina Dance Group practices every Friday. If you want to join them, they're more than welcome. It's all of the Polish Cadets in Black Rock, but we're here on, in historic Polonia, and we have a lot more to go. That's Dinkus right. Dinkus Diary will continue when we come back, folks. The party is continuing with a story about a Polish spirit you know and love. Don't go away. When we return, as we get to conjure up some real Polish spirits when Dingus Day Diary continues. Happy Welcome back to Dingus Day Diary. Once again, here are your hosts, Eddie Dobosiewicz and Katie Morse. It's, um, there's so much fun going on here. I love what's going on, people. It's eating and drinking and so laughing much fun and hugging going and kissing and squeezing. It's going great, on, great, great. Eating and drinking. You know, what we laughing. found out recently, in Niagara County, the bees are obviously Polish. We have proof positive. Yeah, 60 proof. We put it into a used bourbon barrel and age it for two years, and it comes out as our special reserve whiskey. On a small road in Cambria, New York, sits a small building with a great spirit. Meet Todd Snyder and Joe Nardecchia, two home brewers that wanted to take their entrepreneurial spirit just a step further. I wandered into a local herb shop in College Town in Ithaca. They were selling homebrew making supplies. You could buy it, it was, it was food, there was no tax on it. So I took it home and in the kitchen made, uh, made my first batch of beer. Uh, that was 1994, something like that, when I made my first beer. Well, my father uh, was born in Italy, came to this country when he was 12. And in my family, I'm the youngest of seven children, we made wine every year from local grapes. Um, and we made 
a lot of wine. <laughs> and this concrete in my mom's basement still smells like wine. <laughs> so that kind of started this whole fermenting, creating alcohol when I was young. My wife got me a beer kit one year and I, I was introduced to Todd and a whole bunch of other people in the local beer club. So I became a home brewer and then we decided, mm, why don't we distill? We've mastered beer, you know, here we are. For the last three years, Todd and Joe have been making great spirits in small batches at their distillery, Niagara Craft Spirits. We make a bourbon, we age that for eight months. We also have a smoked uh, corn whiskey with hints of cherry wood. Their vodka, gin, whiskey, and bourbon have been gaining in popularity, but it's their Krupnik that has been gaining attention these days. No, I've had Krupnik before. No, I haven't. So it's really good. It's good. Yeah, I like it. It's actually really good. It's smooth. It tastes good, and I like it. Tell me about Krupnik. What is it? Krupnik is a traditional Polish liqueur. There's seven or eight different herbs and spices that give it both uh, a vibrant um, aroma, brilliant flavor, and a wonderful uh, straw color. Our Krupnik is special because it's made very authentically with all West New York ingredients. The honey is a local Niagara County honey. It's from a, a family farm that's not too far from here that we buy it from. Everything is as local as we possibly can get. Why Krupnik? Uh, well, about the time we were we were starting up the distillery, we were hearing on the news that there was the shortage of this Polish uh, spirit. So, uh, so we just you know we were looking for a way to plug into this the ethnic beauty that's happening in Buffalo, and uh, yeah, so that's so we we heard about Krupnik, we thought, wow, that's that would be cool to make. Let's let's give it a try, and the reception has just been amazing. Actually, for a nice sipping beverage for all night long, it was very good. And by the way, it's not really considered drinking if it's for medicinal purposes, right? I had people come in here while they're sick, take a shot, leave, and they feel hundred times better. <laughs> Good. Try it. Come try it. Todd, Joe, and their families promise to continue bringing the spirit of our local earth to life, one drink at a time. Almost everything we get is from within 10 miles of where we are. We like to keep the farmers farming, and we'll keep distilling. Our families pitch in and help out whenever we need it. They promote our products with us. They bottle with us. So it's it's fun. It's nice to have a small family business where where we can use our skills to create something that so many people can enjoy. You get four tastings and then you also get to keep the glass. We follow a very traditional European process where we don't cut corners, we don't buy alcohol and repackage it or add it to it. We create everything here ourselves by hand and we like to keep it that way. A lot of science involved, uh, agriculture is involved, so it's, uh, yeah, it's been fun. Nazdravia! T that stuff, that stuff is delicious. <laughs> Katie, you gotta try. It's the best Krupnik I ever had. I I'm telling you, it's great. But you know, drinking without eating at a Polish celebration, it's like rye bread without a butter lamp. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, you add a piece of Polish sausage and I'm right there with you. Because you know, this time of year, you can get Polish sausage fresh. You can get it smoked. You can get that holiday blend. Right. And coming up, we're going to introduce you to one family that's been a part of a lot of traditions here in Western New York for decades. I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> but we got more to go, so don't go anywhere yet unless you're going to make a sandwich. Come right back. Put on your polka dancing shoes. Dingus Day Diary will return with more toe-tapping fun when we continue. Happy Dingus Day, everybody. Happy Dingus Day, Buffalo. Happy, Happy Dingus Day, Buffalo. Happy Dingus Day, Buffalo. Udanego śmigusa dingusa. Welcome back to Dingus Day Diary, a celebration of Polonia's past, present, and future. Now, here are your hosts, Eddie Dobashevitz and Katie Morris. Welcome back. We are here in Buffalo's historic Polonia district as we celebrate Dingus Day 2019. And we talked about this before we went to break. A big part of the Polish Easter tradition is the food. Well, Redlinski Meats has been filling tables in Western New York for decades. Customers flocking to the store in Chictawaga. For many, it is that traditional spot where they go to get everything they need for their celebrations all in one place. So I had to go check it out. 
stole the kishka? I have it right here. It's a must-do for Western New Yorkers during the Easter season. They tell us tradition and nothing like Redlinski. For decades, the family's been serving its famous fish, ham, and of course, Polish sausage at the store on Walden Avenue. But the store isn't where this story begins. It was a family business that started with making sausage in Grandma's kitchen, bring it on the bus, sell it in the market until you eventually sold enough to buy a sausage plant. The market, Buffalo's Broadway market, of course. Joe Redlinski remembers his beginnings in the family biz. You know, I started when I was 12 years old, and uh, my first job was bringing the sausage from the sausage plant to the market, fighting through the crowds. And in those crowds, current employee Arlene Zielinski. A long time, I used to go to the Broadway market with my mom and dad when I was young. <laughs> little girl. These days, you'll see her behind the counter when you stop in to get your Easter favorites. Anything else, sir? Nope, that's it. Rodlinski Meat launched in 1947 when Joe's grandfather and his brothers got back from serving in the Navy. Since its beginning, quality has been the number one priority. What I use in my sausage, you can pronounce. It's salt, pepper, sugar, garlic, marjoram. I don't use any of the additives or fillers that a lot of the other guys use, and I use a natural casing. And that recipe keeps customers coming back year after year. It's five deep, close to Easter time, out here. Yes, it is. And they're like from all over Rochester, and they take the ride. Oh, yeah. I'll sell about 36 tons of the sausage the week before Easter. It'll stretch from here to Rochester, so, you know if you lay it out. And what's the secret to cooking that perfect holiday Polish sausage? Boil it for about 30 minutes on a low boil. Then I like to take it out and I like browning it in a pan. It's, it's just a little better that way. Or you can cut it in nickel chips and fry it up that way. Mm -hmm. But when you boil it first, it tends to plump up and hold that juice in. That's the way I always do. Do you take it to church and have it blessed? Of course. If you're not sure what to get, there's really no way to go wrong, but Joe wants to be sure his customers walk away with something they like. I'm a big fan of sampling. I mean, I will sample people up and down, and I think that's the best way to sell my product, just taste it. That's what it's all about, It's just honest product, honest people. It's Buffalo, you know, it really is. And there's not many of us left, but the ones that are left have been doing it right for a long time. We're just getting warmed up. There's still more Pussy Willow fun coming. You know how that goes. <laughs> Dingus Day Diary will be back faster than you can say. Nasrovia! Happy Dingus Day, Buffalo. Happy Dingus Day, Buffalo. Happy Dingus Day, Western New York and whole America. Welcome back to Dingus Day Diary, live from the historic Polonia District in Buffalo. So welcome back to Dingus Day Diary. We're in the historic Polonia district here in Buffalo, New York, and we are having some fun. You know, this neighborhood has gone through so many changes over the years, but there's one guy who has been a stalwart champion for this neighborhood for 32 years, Councilman David Franchik, and he joins us here uh, on set today. Dave, Eddie, welcome. And Eddie, yes, she Polonia, yes, <laughs> I love that. I have to translate. <laughs> I need to get to those adult Polish uh, classes. But, but, yeah, it means Polonia has not perished yet. It's still alive. Polonia is alive and well on the east side thanks to efforts like Eddie's Parade, which is in the first year, it was just a guy pushing a pickle barrel. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's yeah. just like dozens and dozens of floats and, and hundreds and hundreds of people celebrating a rich ethnicity here on the east right. side. And by I'm the way, so happy for what you've done. By the way, thank you for pushing that pickle barrel. Oh, yes, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, and eating a few on the way. Well, can we talk about that, Councilman? Because you've been here for decades and you've really watched things change. Talk to me about the changes that you've seen and what you're also hoping to see moving forward in this area. When I was elected, the Dead Sea was still sick, but it was a very <laughs> long time ago. But I, I just, you know, see things have changed. When I first ran for office, you had to speak some Polish to be elected. You had the World War II generation. I had literature in Polish. And then when that generation left us, 
uh, you had to adapt to new groups coming in, immigrant groups uh, from all over the world. Uh, but people still know what's quality. And the Polish-American heritage on the east side uh, contributes to that wonderful mix of what Buffalo is all about. Preserving the churches, preserving the buildings, uh, celebrating that culture right here. What do you think the future of this neighborhood holds? I think it's great. I think it's great. I, I'm more optimistic every day. I've lived here almost all of my life. I live one block away from where I was born. And when I see other people doing things, it lifts my spirits. You know, I don't feel, I don't want to be negative about it. So I, I'm just bullish on the whole neighborhood for years to come. So this is your last term now and uh, soon you'll be, uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to be making pierogi? What are you well, going to be doing? I'll, I'll sleep till noon and my wife will bring home the kielbasa. He's a very good cook, folks. He's a very good folks. If if he ever in, uh, invites you over to his house for dinner, you make sure you get there early. This guy's I, an I, excellent cook. I think I'd be kicked out of the house if I tried that. <laughs> so, you know, I love teaching at Buff State, which yeah. I do. And uh, uh, so I'll continue to do that and you know, sticking up for folk right here in this neighborhood. And for the person who comes next, what are you hoping is in their sights? What are you hoping they'll do? Well, it's a generational shift. I hope they appreciate something like this and continue to support it. Uh, if they don't, I'm going to go and get them. I'm going to find <laughs> them and say, hey, listen, this is what it's all about. Listen, I think I speak on behalf of a lot of people that feel the same way. Thank you for being such a champion for this area and preserving our legacy and our history as we look towards the future. And Thanks. thank you for helping thank me. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, this is not the only Polish neighborhood in town, and we talked about that before. In Western New York, there's a lot of Polish communities. Dunkirk, Fredonia, Elma, obviously we talked about earlier, Black Rock, but also in Niagara Falls. A big Polish community once stood in Niagara Falls, and there's one little stalwart restaurant that still stands there as a testament to that, and uh, it, it's, they take their Polish very serious in Niagara Falls, even if they support the fighting Irish. I love Niagara Falls. I've lived here, but born here. Church here, school here. For the last 64 years, Ed Gdowski has held court at a watering hole in Niagara Falls, New York, that is as legendary as he is. If these walls could talk, there should be some good stories. And you wanted to drink anything? You come here. Moonshine and all. Yeah, they used to make moonshine downstairs, my father. -in -law. Like so many immigrant colonies, the church was the hub. This Polish neighborhood was no different. People moved close to where they were going to church and where the kids were going to school. That was a big thing. But the diocese closed Holy Trinity, and of course, when you lift the anchor, the ship drifts away. When the church closed, they went down to 24th Street. Yet this meeting place continues to draw a loyal following, even though everything around it has disappeared or moved away. Why are you still here? Nobody told me to get out. <laughs> Do I have a lot of things going on? Football games at Notre Dame, baseball. Sal Magley used to come in here. Yeah, but what's with that Notre Dame worship? When I was a kid, my dad, that's all he listened to, Notre Dame. He never understood what they were talking about because he was from Poland. But he liked the game, and I, I flew over from there. Fun and games are great, but many think it's Ed that's the draw. After all these years, he's become a true legend. Have you ever thought about retirement? Yeah, when Labuda gets me. <laughs> <laughs> when who? Labuda. Funeral no Undertaker. When he gets me, I'm leaving. <laughs> this is my home. My friends are here. If I had lived to 120, I'd be here. So what's the Godowski secret? Good booze. <laughs> Good friends. And go out. You can't stay home all the time. What's your favorite drink? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a phenomenal, phenomenal answer to that question, Eddie. I love that. Uh, you know, he was a great guy at a good house. Great. He was so great. And so we talk a lot about the older generations when we look back and we talk about what's happened over the years. But it's so important to discuss what's happening now in the new generation. The future of polka music, I don't think, has, has ever been brighter. You know, Dingus Day is obviously a good example of uh, the future of Polonia carrying on. But if you need any proof about the future of polka music, wait until you get a load of this story. When you hear the word polka, most people think of accordion. But that's not the only squeeze box that keeps this music alive. Well, they're both called squeeze boxes, but the uh, accordion has a piano keyboard. Concertina, like a harmonica, it's a different note going in and a different note pulling out. 
Matt Pejkowski was a polka pioneer, introducing the concertina to Buffalo's Polonia way back when. My father's the one that brought it here from South Bend many years ago. He decided that Buffalo should have some good music, Polish music. So that's what my father did. When my father had an orchestra, the men dressed up and they all looked so sharp. And always the concertina was in with them. So Matt played in dance halls and taverns and on the radio. He loved playing, but he loved teaching even more. So in between gigs, he taught. And one of those students was a kid named Frank Stanchewski. He took my grandfather on as a student. He started playing with, when he was eight. One of the lessons Frank learned from Matt was how important it was to teach others. Frank Stanchewski gave me a lot of pointers. Frank's student, Ronner Banchik, learned the same thing his teacher learned years before. Squeeze the box, but spread the love. When uh, Keith gave me a call, said, you know, he'd like to learn, could I teach him? And I said, I would be happy to teach you guys. And he goes, by the way, I got two boys that like to learn. And they came in and they were pretty diligent at learning and uh, they were two of the best students. To see lessons taught by your father almost a century ago continue to influence a whole new generation must be quite gratifying. I think they're going to follow in my father's footsteps. I couldn't be happier if they were my own boys. Any place that they were playing special, I was there. In fact, they even played for my birthday last year. Once you get the hang of it, you can get really good, and it's really fun to play. The first song that we ever learned that was actually a song was Little Johnny Polka. You feel so good about yourself if you memorize a song. Let's be real. Polka's not the only thing kids listen to these days, is it? Uh, I don't know. On the concertina, I really like to play polkas because it's faster. Right. Do you listen to other stuff, though? Or what, yeah, what I listen, do you like to to listen to classic rock and yeah. stuff like that. You hear some, there's concertina and accordion and a lot of classic rock. You hear it all over the place. What about you? What do you listen to? Um, I really like my favorite band, which is Imagine Dragons. I really like that band. When you guys form your band, what are you going to call it? Um, the Next Generation. Yep. They pretty much grew up watching my grandfather uh, play. He lived to, to be uh, almost 92 years old. If he was here, he'd be really proud. It's amazing that he picked it up so quick and so easy. And now his brother's rubbing off right on him. And now he's going to have another little brother that plays. So I'm happy for all three. Ryan, is, uh, he's probably into his fifth month of, of practicing now, um, and he's coming along. Well, at first when you start, it's hard, but once you get, you move on and get used to it, it, you get, it gets easier and easier. Do you think there's a future for polka music? Absolutely, especially here in Buffalo, I think tradition is strong. You know, you really see that, that, that Polish pride taking root now. It's kind of like an animal. If no one like cares about it and no one does it, it's going to go extinct. What do you think the future of Polish music is? It's going to flourish. I think it's going to wake up Buffalo. And any time I can listen to concertina music, I do. Believe me, I do. If you could ask your grandfather for any advice or tell him something, what would it be? Thank you for playing this. If like you never played it, we would have never played it, and I'm really enjoying it. Play me some folk music that Grandma and Grandpa used to play. Play me the old time music. So. Here's the future of polka music right here. This is the future, and this is the guy that took it to a whole new dimension. We got uh, we got all the Logan boys here, Chase and Logan, or all the Stancheski boys, Chase and Logan, and Ryan, and of course the star of our show this uh, this evening, stir, Jimmy stir. Stir. stir, Jimmy Stir, Stir the show. Ah, uh, the Stir of the show. show. It's good Very to be nice. here, my first time, and I'm excited, and I'm really excited about playing with these guys. These guys are thrilled. I, bet, I, I hope they don't overshow shadow me now. I will, you know, oh, listen. Man. I've I seen know. them. They're pretty they look, good. Yeah, they look awful cool. 
Well, can I ask you, what does it mean to you to be able to play with that? They're 11 and 12 years old. Well, you know, I, I started my band when I was 11 years old. So I know what it must feel like. You know, I, I used to look up to the, the guys that I knew back then and uh, that I loved so much in polka music. And, uh, you know, I thought, man, someday I'd like to be just like them. And and I'm sure that when they see the polka bands, that's what they want to be. And it's it's so great to have the young people uh uh, when you out. started this this journey, did you ever imagine that you would take polka to the to the level that it has? I mean, you have become like a superstar, at, at 18 Grammy awards. That's unprecedented. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I guess I'm fortunate. You know, I I can say I'm the I'm the leader because I own the bus. You know? <laughs> but that's the only reason. I, look at I, my thing when I was a young kid. I thought I want to. I always looked up the Lawrence Welk show. Right. And I always thought everybody knew who Lawrence Welk was, but they also knew every guy in that band. Right. Myron Florin or, uh, you know, just all the dancers. And that's what I wanted to do with my band so that everybody knew the guys in our orchestra. And that's what I do. I feature a, almost all the guys in the band all the time. And I think well, that makes a lot Johnny of... Johnny Karras is in your band. He's Johnny... from Buffalo. And I talked to him yesterday. He said he knew immediately when he met you that you were the guy that was going to take Polka to this whole new level and really expose people all over the and nation to it. Just before you were talking, was he drinking? <laughs> I'll bet he was, that little devil. And no, you just know, a and, little. I, I, and he's I been, don't kiss and tell. John's been in the band. 40 years wow. and you're probably looking right now thinking I wonder how old Jimmy Stir really is <laughs> well I started when I was 12 so that would be 52 <laughs> that's good enough for me man <laughs> so Liz, how excited are you guys to be performing with Jimmy Stir tonight I'm pretty excited I mean I know he's really famous with the polka in yeah stuff. It's a, you know, after you guys are you're gonna be on TV you're gonna be superstars right are all your friends watching tonight I have no idea. Yeah. And, and uh, Ryan just started. How long have you been playing? Just a couple of months, right? Yeah, a couple of months. Oh. Yeah, but you're getting good, and you'll be even better than these guys soon, and you'll be playing with Mr. Sir soon, too. I, I'm looking forward to it. What can we I expect think it'll be tonight? wonderful. What can we expect tonight? Well, you got to stick around. you gotta, you got to go in the tent and watch it. I can't let it out of the bag. What well, is listen. your impression of Dingus Day been so far? I gotta ask you. Well, you know, we, we just got here this afternoon, but I, I used to hear so much about it. Yeah. And you know, I get the opportunity, of course, to tour all over, all over the world. But one of my favorite places is in Texas, and they have what they call the Worst Fest in a place called New Braunfels, Texas, and it's just like this. I mean, it's just wonderful and you know, exciting, and everybody's having a good time. It's really great. Hey, listen, why don't shake it? I want to get the picture. The the old and the new shaking hands right here. Shake his hand right there. Let's <laughs> a little get a bit of history. There we in go. The there right we here. go. That's right there. Sure. You better not outdo me tonight. Ryan, good to meet you guys. Good I'm looking you. forward to it. It'll this, be fun. It'll be fun. We'll have a good time. I mean, your show is just so high energy. I, 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 it, it, people just they, they go crazy when they see you. What is what's the secret? How do you get them so excited? Well, I don't know. I, I think I just get pepped up. Uh, you know, I enjoy the music. You know, of course, it's no it's no secret that I'm 100% Irish. But growing up, sure and Begora. Yeah. <laughs> But growing up, I, I still live in a little town called Florida, New York, oh, yeah. which is about 60 miles north of New York. 85% of the people are Polish. So our local radio station played polkas every day. Our high school dances had polka bands. Wow. And we had the Polish weddings. So that's how I fell in love with the music. We and that's wait. just I'm... how I just got excited about it. We cannot wait. I, I, folks, if you got a few minutes, come on down right now, because he's going to go on in just a couple of minutes. But we have had so much fun here, Katie. Isn't that nice? Thank you Eddie, so much. Eddie, Thank Katie, you. Yeah. So nice to meet you. It has been such an amazing journey to take a look back at the history, talk about the culture, talk about what's the future for Polonia. I love York. this festival. Jimmy, I'm so glad you and, could be part of our oh, festival here kidding? this Best, year. Thank you so and much. And guys, thank you us. so much. I look forward to it. And thank you, all of you out there watching us tonight and watching us every year. We know we have loyal viewers out there watching Dingus Day Diary and supporting Dingus Day, supporting Polonia and Buffalo. Thank you so much. Remember, Dingus is not just a day, it's a state of mind. Happy Dingus Day, Buffalo. Happy Dingus Day, Buffalo. Happy Dingus Day, Buffalo.
Happy 